Hello, I'm Leonard Malton, and I'm happy to be sitting here at Fess Parker's beautiful winery in Los Olivos, California, with our host, our winemaker, and our star, Fess Parker. Thanks for letting us come and visit you today. It's a pleasure, Leonard, and it's always great to see you. Thank you. I've just been watching again the Davy Crockett shows as they first appeared on the air, and it's taken me back a long time. And I wonder if you have a specific recollection of the first time you met Walt Disney and heard about this idea. I, I certainly do. You know, I, um, when Walt Disney saw a bit from the movie Them, mm -hmm. and uh, that led to a, a series of meetings with Bill Walsh, who later produced the shows, and Tom Blackburn, who wrote the screenplays. And after I'd been out a couple of times, uh, I, I was asked to come again, and they said, now you're going to meet Walt. And he came down the hall in the writer's building there and came in, and he said, why don't you come with me? And we walked down the hall, to, and there was a desk and two chairs, and I was carrying my little guitar. And he said, where are you from, and what have you been doing? And he made me feel comfortable right off. I mean, he, he was not threatening or... Uh, I felt very comfortable, and finally he said, I see you brought your guitar, and I said, yeah, i write a little song or two, and he said, well, play me one. So I did, and uh, he said, okay, thank you, and uh, we parted, and uh, a few days later, they said, uh, come back, and uh, we're going to do the thing with you. Did you realize the importance of that statement, of that commitment at that moment? No, not really. Uh, you know, I, after all, had just done the leading uh, uh, male role in an Annie Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, Walt Disney was, uh, that was a, a magic place. And I, I'd been in all the studios. I'd been a freelance actor for about three years, so I was familiar. But there was something about the Disney studio that was very special, and, and you, it was collegiate. Mm -hmm and uh, calm and peaceful and the people were more like family uh, than any place I'd been. And I don't imagine as a working actor you necessarily met the boss at every studio you went to. No, uh, Mr. Mayor managed to avoid me and so did Jack <laughs> Warner. <laughs> did you feel Walt's hand or see Walt's hand at work as the shows were being prepared or, or was the people on the front line who were actually getting the job done? I think Walt was uh, very, very much involved, although I, I didn't realize it at the time. First of all, if I can just tell you that the company was, Disney did not have a resident film organization, so the people were independent cameramen and, and directors and so forth from the industry. So they all came together. And, and Walt Disney sent us as far away from the studio as you can get, Cherokee, North Carolina. There was one telephone in Cherokee <laughs> and a motel and a filling station, and that was it. And we were there for two or three weeks, and uh, it wasn't long until it was apparent that we were running over schedule. But he liked what he was seeing. And then he visited us one day. Pat Hogan, who played Red Stick, the engine, had just been beating me up all day. <laughs> and uh, Walt and Lily showed up with some friends of theirs. And uh, I think from that moment on, we felt pretty good that, that he'd come to see what we were doing. Do you remember getting any instructions about how to play Davy? I mean, there was a script, which, which indicated a lot. But did you have any kind of coaching, or did someone say to you, you know, be more of this, be less of that? Or did you sort of feel your own way? Actually, I had quite a conflict with the director. Uh, we became friends ultimately, but for a f few weeks it, it was really difficult because he was a stage-trained tr actor turned director, Norman Foster. My background was just the few films that I'd been in, and I tended to be sort of low-key and he didn't think that I was coming across. So he was constantly, you know, complaining and pushing me. And, uh, and maybe, maybe it worked, you know. I mean, sometimes you have to get people a little irritated to get enough energy. Mm -hmm. So I've never known where the, where the equity was there. But between us, it worked out. And uh, years later, uh, we became friends. 
but for a long time <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we weren't comfortable <laughs> the location filming adds so much yes. to these shows first of all, they look beautiful but there's a obviously there's an authenticity you're not going to get on the back lot that's true you know that was another thing that that uh, Walt Disney allowed us to do we traveled from Cherokee North Carolina into Tennessee it was a beautiful river there and that's where we did the bear wrestling scene you sure spoil things good now I gotta do it the old-fashioned way Give my fur to me. and then we moved on to Nashville to Percy Warner Park which was a huge park right in the middle of Nashville and it was just uh, as natural as if we'd been 40 miles south so we shot a lot of the film there but I think the high point was uh, Andrew Jackson's uh, home the Hermitage was available for us and we were able to shoot there on the grounds and then stop at the door and then there was a, a banker uh, who lived in, in Nashville who had done a replica of the Hermitage and he allowed us to come inside so we had to both ways and uh, there was something else about it I think the people in Carolina and Tennessee became really very involved and particularly the actors the community actors who played the, the legislators and the business people that we really did have some very talented people that that uh, I think television was just discovering mm -hmm. you and Betty Epson just seemed like a perfect fit we did hit it off and uh, in so many instances, uh, Buddy, uh, you know, was uh, teaching me things. And uh, for example, they brought up two horses for us to ride in one of the episodes. One was black and one was white. So I said, uh, Buddy, which one do you want? And he said, I'll take the white one. <laughs> so, you know, we, we had that little friendly rivalry <laughs> going on right from the beginning. I'm thinking about other good people like William Bakewell. Oh, Billy Bakewell became a lifelong friend, and uh, and he touched my life in many ways, and, and not the least of which was introducing me to the Motion Picture Country Home, mm -hmm. and sponsored he, he sponsored me to for be a to be a, a member of the Board of Trustees for a while, but then when I started shooting Daniel Boone, I didn't have time, so I had to resign. Now, Kenneth Toby has a funny situation. He's he's in both series of yes. Crockett in right. quite different parts. Right. I guess they thought kids wouldn't notice, huh? I don't think they did. I think he, <laughs> I think he got away with it. He was a great boy and, and Jocko was just one of my favorite characters. What's your name? Jocko. Mine's Georgie. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. Tasty, ain't it? I grow pink whiskers on a hound dog. Also, Basil Rysdale is oh. uh, uh, another. There's another veteran who. Uh, People, uh, no one in, in today would know Basil Rysdale. He was a um, a light opera performer. He sang. Uh, he was a great character actor. Enjoying yourself, David? It was a mighty fine supper, Mr. President. Only the best in the presidential palace. Since you put that new portico up in front and got her fresh painted, folks are calling her the White House. Yeah, sounds better at that. Yeah, that's what she'll be from now on. And I remember when we got close to the, the scene where Davy Crockett goes in and, and uh, makes his speech before Congress, uh, he casually asked me on the set one day, he said, uh, uh, are you are you ready to do that scene that's coming up? And I said, Well, I think so. And he said, Would you uh, would you like to run to the, the run the lines with me a little bit? And I said, Sure, I'd love to. Basil introduced me to uh, some concepts of of how to do that scene that, frankly, I hadn't the experience nor the, nor had I recognized. So he was a great help, and we continued our friendship until he passed away. All right, now let's talk about Jeff York. He is so wonderful as, as Mike Fink. And later on in Old Yeller and mm -hmm. yes, Great Locomotive course. Chase and all those films that we had a, had a lot of fun doing. Well, you know, Jeff, uh, Jeff was an interesting person. 
<laughs> Ain't he forgive me yet? Nope. But he'll get over it. Well, Lucky just as feelings got hurt. You know, Davey, you showed rare good sense of getting old Mike Fink to help you. So he was a character playing a character. Girls run and hide, brave men shiver. I'm Mike Fink, king of the river. I don't know if you'd call it typecasting or not, but again, Mike Mazurki just seems the perfect choice for that character. Mike introduced me to the concept that I could be a rag doll. <laughs> we had no stunt doubles. We had to do our, our fight. We had to make them up and all that. And uh, Mike and I were, you know, wrestling and fighting, and he would just pick me up and throw me, uh, like you say, like a rag doll. And, and at one point, he was going to throw me into a split rail fence, mm. which we had decided would be nice if I knocked the rail down. Mm -hmm. And so the first time he threw me into it, I had no padding, and that was the rail was much stronger than we anticipated, and it really hurt. So we took the blanket off the camera, and I stuffed it in the back of my, my <laughs> pants, and we did it again, and it worked. He spent many years as an actor, but many years as a wrestler as well. Absolutely. And I, I had, you know, great respect for his physical prowess. <laughs> You know, it wasn't until we got to the River Pirates that someone thought about having some stunt doubles there. But by that time, we were accustomed to doing most of the things ourselves. Well, do you remember your first inkling that Davey was, uh, was becoming a phenomenon? Unlike uh, some of the other uh, phenomenons that, that followed, they tended to be more pointed in their audience. This seemed to be mostly from the old to the young, or vice versa, mm -hmm. and everybody in between, briefly. Mm -hmm. How quickly did they put you on a regimen of making personal appearances as Davy Crockett? Uh, my first stop was Oklahoma City, and this is the way it went. I got dressed in the restroom on a small commercial airplane, <laughs> went down the stairs, there was a limousine and six motorcycle policemen, and we went as fast as you can go to a horse show in progress. I got out of the, the limousine, I had my rifle and my hat and my costume on, and they said, here's your horse, and I said, what'll I do? And they said, go in, ride around the arena, wave to the kids, come out to the middle, sing Davy Crockett, and, and anything else you'd like to do. <laughs> uh, and then that's the way we started. And, and were you kept pretty busy doing that for a while? 42 cities, 13 countries later. Wow. But I, I basically didn't, I didn't mind doing the PR for the studio. Um, I, Walt had given me 10% of the Davy Crockett merchandise. That is the Walt Disney Davis, mm -hmm. Davy Crockett merchandise. You know, so I enjoyed doing those personal appearances and going to Hudson's department store in, in Detroit and Pizzitz and Birmingham and, <laughs> you know. But uh, it was a great adventure. I enjoyed it. And then you were at opening day of Disneyland, which was another, I'm sure, memorable day. Yes. Uh, in my wildest dreams, I didn't expect to sing and dance on live television, but we did. <laughs> Such as it was. <laughs> when I was riding through the woods, the gray dog skins were bought and good. Forty arrows hit a tree. I knew the Sioux were out for me. I had the great pleasure of riding with Walt in the first parade, uh, and then going over to the fire station and having a little libation and sliding down the fire pole. <laughs> and I think a very exciting and memorable moment for me was Walt standing out with his Hawaiian shirt. And uh, in the in the crowd, looking and seeing what he had put together, and then his first speech. And I always thought he made great speeches. He he had a knack of of uh, communicating verbally, yeah. personality-wise. Mm -hmm. He he was a good salesman. Oh, he's a great communicator, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. What was the the best thing about being part of that Walt Disney family? I've had uh, the friendship and the, and, uh, the interest uh, of so many people and in, and in such a broad uh, way because 
Disney is not just a popular product in America, it's a popular product in the world. And so to, to uh, be a part of something of that uh, nature and to have shared that with the individuals that created it, I often feel, you know, that I'm being congratulated for Bill Walsh and, and Bakewell and, and uh, Walt and uh, all the people. And it's, it's been a wonderful uh, experience. Uh, I, I've, I've seen no negative. And I've, the only thing I'm looking forward to is to go to Disneyland on the 50th anniversary of Disneyland. <laughs> A worthy goal. Yes. Fess, I want to thank you for letting us visit your beautiful winery and for sharing all those wonderful memories. Cheers Leonard, to you. It's a pleasure uh, on behalf of the Fess Parker family. And uh, I'd like to invite you into the little village of Los Olivos here in Santa Barbara County for lunch. I think I will agree. Okay. Thank you very much. Beautiful.